Okay, this is Frank P. Marone Jr. from Gettysburg Historic Walking Tours. And today, we're going to look at the John and Mary Wentz house. Now, in July of 1863, John and his wife Mary Wentz resided in this house, along with their daughter, Susan Wentz. It was right across from Sherfy's Peach Orchard. It was a small one and a half story log house on a stone foundation which you see here in front of us now john and mary were in their 70s at the time of the battle of gettysburg and again they lived here along the emmitsburg road and the ra battle raged around their farm especially on thursday july 2nd 1863. now during this action John actually hid down in the cellar. Now, this is the foundation of the John and Mary Wentz house. It's 32 feet long, 16 feet wide, and again, it was a log foundation of one and a half stories high. There is a very interesting story about this house because John and Mary had a son named Henry Wentz. And Henry Wentz was a plaster. He was five foot eight inches tall, had blue eyes and black hair. And before the war, Henry had moved to Martinsburg, Virginia, which later became Martinsburg, West Virginia. Most likely he moved there for his skills as a laborer. But during the Civil War, Henry actually enlisted with the Confederacy. And it was here across the ridge where we're aimed right now that Henry Lynch returned at the Battle of Gettysburg with Osmond B. Taylor's Confederate Artillery Battery. He was an ordnance sergeant in the battery and his battery was ordered to fire on the Peach Orchard and his boyhood home. And that is exactly what they did around 4 p.m on July 2nd, 1863. And the battle raged across these fields as Longstreet's men charged across this field and most specifically in this area, Barksdale's troops marched right through the Wentz farm. In fact, it was the 17th Mississippi that went right through the peach orchard. Now, so some post-war pictures and what these structures are here are actually wells. And they once had buildings built over top of them. Um, and I'll go ahead and upload some pictures because John Wentz sold this farm in 1869. And a man named John Beecher, who was a carpenter by trade, came to the farm. Now, he's seen that the farm was in dilapidated condition, most likely... Uh, if it was a log structure, it was probably built somewhere in the late 17s and early 1800s. So by then, it was probably close to 80 years old itself and being a wood structure, most likely subject to rot. There was no great reports of damage done to this farm during the Battle of Gettysburg in July of 1863. So the reason that John Beecher most likely tore it down, being a carpenter, was to remove the old log structure and to build a more modern weatherboarded structure, in which he did, and again, I'll post pictures of that structure. Now, that building itself was built on the original foundation of the John and Mary Wentz house. And then finally, around the year of 1960, that building became quite dilapidated, also being now 80 or 90 years old. And the Park Service, with lack of funding, decided that they would not restore it, and they removed it in 1960. Now, this right flank marker to, marker to Pennsylvania troops, rather, um, is also on the actual Wentz Farm. And the monument is along the road right next to the Peach Orchard. And again, if you look here in the distance, you're going to see uh, a good port of the part of the battlefield from July 2nd, 1863, as well as some of the Wentz's neighbors, which included the Sherfies, the Cordories, the Klingles, and the Spanglers. 
Now, a little bit about John and his wife, Mary, who resided in the house. John was born in the year 1786, and he died on April the 18th, 1870, and he is buried in Evergreen Cemetery. Mary, his wife, was born in 1789, and she died just about one year later on April the 13th, 1871, and she is also buried in Evergreen Cemetery. Henry Wentz, the son, the one who uh, fired on his boyhood home, was born in the year of 1827, and he died on December the 10th, 1875, in West Virginia, Martinsburg, West Virginia. So he had moved to Martinsburg, Virginia, uh, before the Civil War, and by the time the Civil War was over and post-war, that part of Virginia became West Virginia. You also want to go back and watch some other videos that I've posted that will show some of the actions that happened around here on this part of the battlefield. And they would include Barksdale's charge at Gettysburg, Longstreet's counter-assault at Gettysburg, Longstreet's charge at Gettysburg, the battle for the peach orchard, the Abraham Trossel farm. Now we're zooming in on in the distance. That would be the Henry Spangler farm. Henry owned two farms, one here and another one on the Baltimore Pike. Just next to that farm, of course, is the famous Sherfy farm, where the peach orchard, the Sherfy peach orchard, was a part of that farm. And that is the original house with the recreated barn that was burned down during the Battle of Gettysburg. In the distance, you can also see, uh, in far in the distance, the Corridori farm, and then a little bit further to the left there, the Klingel farm. And these were all the neighbors of the Wences here in July of 1863. And as we walk back here, Again, passing the only remaining original structure, which is the foundation, I just want to uh, let you know that this is one of the great human interest stories of the Battle of Gettysburg. A son, Henry Wentz, born here in Adams County, returns to fight against not only his own native state, but against the farm that he grew up in living. This has been another video, another historical video, the Wentz Farm, here on Gettysburg Historic Walking Tours. And I am your historian, Frank Patrick Marone, Jr.